I can't believe y'all are making me do this. We drafted our day. <laughs> what did you the music just hit the. I, I'm not sure how I need to feel about this. We drafted our day at Disney California Adventure, and now it is time to do it. We each picked three things to our teams from rides, shows, food, and we're living that day out. And mine's up first, so let's get to it. This park has really come a long way since it opened. It was pretty much considered a failure by the Disney company. There wasn't much IP. There was a lot of shopping, but not very many attractions. It famously had the worst attraction Disney ever built, Superstar Limo. And it was a theme park theme to different places in California, located in California. Because why would you want to go to real wine country when you could go to the Disney version? But this park's really become a favorite over the years. You've got Avengers Campus, Cars Land, Pixar Pier, and it's a really nice time. Our first pick is Lamplight Lounge, which is located in Pixar Pier, which originally opened as Paradise Pier, but it has been rethemed featuring all of the fun Pixar characters and IP, including Lux of the Lamp moving as you walk into the land, including a retheming of California Scream into the Incredicoaster, featuring a number of new shops and shows within the land as well. Up first on our Disney California Adventure, draft day is brunch at the Lamplight Lounge, which is my choice. Uh, Lamplight Lounge offers brunch, lunch, and dinner, and offers a variety of American cuisine with some great selections of craft beers, as well as some nice cocktails. It is themed after Pixar, and on the interior has a variety of sketches and art concept work from all of the Pixar movies that you know and love, from Finding Nemo to The Good Dinosaur. It's really just beautiful on the inside, and the food is nothing to sneeze at either. The Lamplight Lounge is a very popular place to eat, so I recommend making a reservation or keeping your eye open for reservations for the time of day where you would like to eat. For us, that was brunch, and luckily we were able to find a reservation, so we're going to dive right in. Our table is ready, and we're headed downstairs to go ahead and get seated, but as you walk in, you will notice this incredible light fixture that is covered in sheets of different sketches, as well as some quotes from your favorite Pixar films. And right there we see Mike Wazowski, you see Doug, and then Molly's located someone. Oh, you found Bruce. So we also have Bruce the shark. Sorry, I got Buzz too. Oh, Buzz? Buzz. Seems reasonable. The brunch menu offers a variety of different cuisine, ranging from the classics like the brunch burger to the lamp light chilaquiles, which, having had before, are incredible. It's going to be difficult to make a decision for food, but if you think food is bad, it's going to be a lot more difficult to choose maybe a craft beer because this park has become a hub for local California craft beers where they have a lot of options for you to go ahead and produce. And if you're like me and have a very specific food allergy or have a food and dietary preference, make sure to mention that at the front of the restaurant and they'll provide you with the allergy-friendly menu. And if you have more questions, you can always talk to the chef. Not only is there custom artwork located throughout the Lamplight Lounge, it is also on the back of every individual coaster, but it is a surprise, so shall we reveal? Should we guess? I think we should guess movie because I think movie. there's I think there's like six or seven different ones, so I think we should guess like what movie we got. Okay, what movie do you think you got? I'm gonna hope I got Toy Story. Okay, I'm gonna guess I got Finding Nemo. Okay. I think I got Monsters Incorporated. Okay. Ready? We got it. Three, two. Yay! Wow. Oh wow. That is amazing. I love the bow. I got bow. Got I got Coco. We have an extra one on the table, and it's up. Wouldn't have been right. Wouldn't have been right. Wouldn't have been right. But I love the, all the con. Like this is my nerdy paradise brunch restaurant because it's like just concept art everywhere. But I love that it's not just the Pixar movies. We also have the shorts featured as well. Domi She creating Bow went on to create uh, Turning Red. It's amazing. The drinks have arrived. Someone's excited. It's Max. Max is excited. I got the Modern Times IPA, which is a local craft brewery, the Modern Times Brewery. Um, While it is incredibly hop forward, it's smooth, blends off to malt at the end, and is incredibly refreshing for an IPA. So even if you don't like IPAs, I'd recommend this. I will be partaking in a mocktail today. This is the Goofball Island. It is fruit punch, uh, lemonade, and a raspberry puree. It's definitely got the tartness, sweet, it's good like fruit juice mix. Um, if you're looking for something non-alcoholic and you like something sweet with a little bit of tart, 
It's a good stop. And I went for the mimosa flight. I'm not 100% sure what all the flavors are, but by smelling and guessing, we've got lemon, watermelon, this looks like ginger, mint, and I think grapefruit or raspberry. Let's find out. That's grapefruit. I love grapefruit. I often order grapefruit at restaurants because orange is too sweet for me. So it's really tart, but nothing that unusual. This one. Woo! Okay, this one's ginger. That's unusual. I've not had ginger mint. I've not had a mimosa with that before. So that one's delicious. Definitely gotta like ginger for that one. Watermelon. A little too sweet for me, but tastes like fresh watermelon. And lemon. I think it's lemon orange, and I wish it was just lemon. But it's still something a little bit different and unique. That's why I ordered this. I don't normally go for things like this, but it has some unique flavors. So if I were to rank them, I would do ginger, uh, grapefruit, lemon orange, watermelon. I also want to compliment the Lamplight Lounge because while these are a little more juice than I would make them myself, they are not as juice forward as things like at the Mimosa booth at Food and Wine at Epcot or a lot of cocktails. So it actually tastes the champagne, which is nice. Entrees are here, cabs are here. Entrees are here, and they're all looking fabulous. I got the Lamplight Chilaquiles, so they are house-made tortilla chips. They've got a three chili red sauce, cheddar jack cheese, two eggs. They look so gooey. Oh my God, I can't wait to pop that one. Queso fresco, red onion, cilantro, serrano, sour cream, and sliced avocado topped with papitas. I'm so excited. Next up, along with my mocktail, I got the indulgent French toast. Hey, I'm on a little staycation here. I know I'm a local, but I can indulge. This dish is cinnamon brown sugar, hollow bread, Irish cream whip, maple syrup, macerated berries, and a house-made almond brittle, which we see there in the middle. This is a sweet option, and I am excited about it. And I am graced with the New York avocado toast. It is sourdough topped with an avocado mash and some New York steak with a one-up egg, piquillo butter sauce, arugula salad, and pickled red onions with some confit potatoes. There are so many things that I love on this plate. Getting my perfect bite. Look at this. Look at that egg. I love a... Oh, my gosh. I love a runny gooey egg. I know some people don't for texture, but this is a dream. It's just as good as I remember it. First of all, house-made tortilla chips, you can absolutely tell they're a little bit thicker than standard tortilla chips, so they hold up really well to all the heavy toppings. There's absolutely some heat in that green cheese sauce that's on there. It reminds me of enchilada sauce, but with a little bit of spice. Love the runny gooey egg. Love that crema. It is fresh and delicious. Avocado, queso fresco adds a little bit of saltiness. It's just a really well put together dish. If you like Mexican flavors, if you like a little bit of heat, this is phenomenal. Next up is the indulgent French toast. I got a little bit of French toast with some of that whip. Oh my god. Are you indulging? I am indulging. That maple, that cinnamon. This is tasting like a French toast meets cinnamon toast crunch, and it is the taste I can see. Um, if you like a sweet breakfast option, this is awesome. If you're less of a sweet person, just know what you're getting get yourself into, but I have a bit of a sweet tooth for every meal, and so this is perfect for me. It took me a minute to get a bite with everything on it, because there's a lot going on. It's important to mention that this steak is cooked to order, so I got mine medium rare. I'm excited. Right off the bat, this egg is perfectly seasoned. The avocado is fresh. The egg is perfectly, it's very rich but light at the same time. And the pickled onion cuts through all of the other flavors. There's a lot happening on this dish, but my gosh, it all works in unison. Brilliant. All right, so what do you think of Lamplight? Always get a to-go cup of coffee when you leave a Disney's full-service restaurant. That is good advice. That's just a pro tip. It's a great brunch. Great pick. I enjoyed it. I would have picked it if you did. You did well. <laughs> you looked out for us. I, you know, I can't speak to all of your picks, but for this one, I'm in. I love brunch. That's not surprising by looking at me. And I love Pixar. So, like, how would I not? Look, I'm, like, the most basic person you're ever going to meet. And it's, like, legally required that I like brunch. Okay. okay. And it's a great brunch. The food was delicious. The restaurant is so cute. It like, is very It's a cute. very cool restaurant if you're a Pixar fan. I don't know if they had this in the men's restroom, um, but in the ladies' restroom, because the, the signs are like dressed up like the Incredibles on the outside, the men and women sign, and in the baby changing, the baby looks like Jack-Jack. Oh. So just like cute little things. It's an adorable restaurant. This is a much more laid-back park. 
True. So you have the time to like sit and luxuriate and have a longer meal and look at Pixar Pier. You did good. Thanks. Well done, sir. Well, let's move on. On to the next. We cannot escape my picks today because we are headed to Web Slingers next. And as a bonus tree, we get to watch Spider-Man the Stuntronic fly. I'm excited about that. Hi. Hey down there. Spider-Man up here. Like how I'm using my made up name. Time for some field testing. Hey, Spider-Man. Here we go. I bet this looks cool. Avengers Campus is the newest addition to Disney California Adventure and features a variety of attractions, two major ones including Web Slingers and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, as well as tons of characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe that come out and meet at various times. Avengers Campus also features Pim's Test Kitchen and other themed eats from the cinematic universe. I adore Avengers Campus. I do think this land relies a lot on you enjoying characters and performances from said characters and playing a little make-believe. I do believe the Avengers Assemble show is about to happen up here uh, on the Avengers Campus building, which is an action stunt show, and it changes seasonally, so I'm excited to see what they've done for the holidays. Update, it was not the Avengers Assemble show, it was the Dora Milaje and the Black Panther, kind of forever, and now we're in line to meet Spider-Man, not Spider-Man. Now we're in line to meet Iron Man. Very different people. I got confused. They look the same. Oh, do they? We're learning so many new things. It's true. No, I know. So apparently, <laughs> Spider-Man and Iron Man. I know that they don't look the no, same. Well. It feels rude. You know there's red in both. I don't, but I trust you. <laughs> I know the difference between them, unlike the people in Star Wars. Oh, hi. She's back again. <laughs> Join me, won't you? Okay. Wow, what an honor. Thank you. And That's your honor. Now, here's someone who appreciates style. Yeah. My kind of team player. Yeah. That is fantastic. Thank you. Don't mention it. So, I was giving a demo earlier, and... Well, never mind what happened. We need a new guest speaker. Can you fill in? I'd be honored. Perfect. Yeah. The topic is thermal propulsion, gravitational misdirection. Be prepared to levitate something. I can do it. Awesome. <laughs> well, I came all the way here for a picture with you. How about it? Okay, you look almost as cool as I do. I said almost. Web Slingers is a 3D shooter style attraction where you team up with Spider-Man to take care of some shenanigans that have ensued inside of the web building, the Worldwide Engineering Brigade building, utilizing new web slinging technology. This incredibly popular attraction does not have a height requirement and it is no longer a fancy ride, it is now a part of Genie Plus. One of the central themes of Web Slingers is fighting Peter Parker's invention, the Spider-Bots. And if you look closely, located throughout Avengers Campus, you'll see a number of these Spider-Bots webbed to various locations. A couple of the main ones are just outside of the restrooms and then outside of web suppliers. So there are stakes to this. Yes. We have decided that whoever wins the web sling, or whoever has the highest score in our vehicle, chooses a new attraction, ride, or experience in the parks. Yeah, we ended up with nine things because we drafted three each. Ten feels like a better number, and there were some important things that didn't get picked. <laughs> Most importantly, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. This is going to be my number one pick in Avengers Campus because it's not only the best thing in Avengers Campus, it's my favorite thing in the entirety of this park. It is the over theme on top of Tower of Terror featuring the Guardians. The music is amazing. There is an adorable rocket animatronic with a little yeah. rocket paw. It's an amazing attraction and it's not on the list today because Alan decided to pick the Doctor Strange show. Or we could ride Mickey's Fun Wheel. Or the Golden Zephyr. You would tank Guardians for the Golden Zephyr. <laughs> Molly, there's a lot riding on this for you. Yeah. Get in some stretches. Yeah. What is going to be your central approach for this? I like to go with a classic way of sliding, but sometimes my arms get tired, so then I kind of go to the karate chop move. <laughs> nice. What you got? As an expert, as somebody that's ridden this ride many times, I know that while Molly is going to go the classic, this is a little inefficient. She's only firing one at a time. I'm a double barrel kind of guy. 
Alan, I know you're just hoping to see the webs at all. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm colorblind and in 3D shooter style attractions, I don't know where the webs are coming from and I can't see the colors anyway. But You I, won I, last time we played Toy Story Mania all together though. Very different attraction. I also sat alone. Okay. So they put us in the same vehicle. I'm Which they will. Isolated. Okay. I'm going to finger gun it. <laughs> There's, of course, a ton of fun Easter eggs around Avengers Campus and a few really good ones to look for in the pre-show with Peter Parker here at Web Slingers. For example, take a look at the keyboard and you may see some dust off spray that's called Oh Snap with the gauntlet on it. You also will notice that there's a Baymax in the toy claw machine and a nod to the original land that was here, a Bugs Land. My favorite of the Easter eggs, though, is a bumper sticker for Pizza Dogs Pizza Company from Hawkeye. You had a great time on your visit to the Worldwide Engineering Brigade Open House. Using all more tech, you will be able to sling webs just like my buddy Spider-Man. Well, Peppy, do you have a plan? And supervised Disc off Wet Singers. That ride is exhausting. It's the most exhausting shooter ride. It's so fun, but I am physically tired. Now. Yeah, my arms are beat. But how, how do we do? Alan, how'd you do on that ride? It's fine. So I'm you're good. not gonna pick. Um, Molly, what was your score? Two hundred forty-seven thousand. That's that's very respectable. Molly. That's yeah. quite good. Yeah. Now it's not two hundred eighty-two thousand good. <laughs> I'm aware. Which happens, you know, that might be my score. Yeah, I know. But very good all the same. And Alan, you were there too. Do we have to ride the yeah. death wheel now? You know, I'm gonna mull it over a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about it. See how I feel. Okay. Think about mission break. Oh, I'm thinking it's an about amazing it. attraction. It is, you know, but I ride it a lot. I don't usually have friends to ride fun wheel with. Yeah, but it's not fun. Yeah. Well, not alone. I agree. While Max mulls over his victory decision, I wanted to point out a couple of Easter eggs here on the side of Web Slingers. One, you'll notice that the parking is reserved for Jarvis. Of course, that eventually becomes the name of one of Tony Stark's AIs. Additionally, you'll notice that that tree are much smaller than this tree right here in the middle. And you may be wondering, is that just a design fluke? Or maybe, you know, most people don't even notice, but I have an answer for you in case you have. And that's if you look down right here, you will see a certain drain is right here. And that is gamma radiation. So it looks like this tree got hit with a little bit of the Hulk situation. Quick detour before we officially leave Avengers Campus to check out the Wakanda Forever tribute for the sequel and tribute to Chadwick Boseman. There's this very cool photo op right here and another even cooler one this way. These look especially amazing at night. There's also some different Black Panther inspired treats around Avengers Campus right now, as well as uh, over towards where we're headed. There is a special wrap at the shawarma carts. There's peri peri chicken, a couple of different drinks. And I love that they're rolling all this out for T'Challa and Wakanda forever. All right, well, with my Web Slingers win, we have finished up for now at Avengers Campus. We do have to return a little bit later for a show I'm not thrilled about. But for now, we are entering Hollywood Land, one of the opening day sections of the park, but it's gone through a lot of change. And one of the biggest changes is gonna be found in our next attraction. Now, Molly actually said as we walked in that when this park opened, it did not get the greatest reception in the world. And one of the attractions that got pretty poor reception was Superstar Limo, a dark ride that was in this Hollywood land section of the park where you were trying to get to a movie premiere and you would see all kinds of celebrities, but Superstar Limo only stayed open for, well, less than a year and led us to what I think is the greatest glow up in the history of Disney because Superstar Limo became the dark ride that is now Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the rescue. This is a classic Disney dark ride, still within the Superstar Limo area, 
uses the same ride vehicles, but it takes you into the world of Monsters, Inc. all throughout the lap floor and the story of the first Monsters, Inc. film. You're not going to find this to be a thrill ride. It's not an Incredicoaster or a Mission Breakout, but if you're looking for a family appropriate dark ride through a well-loved Pixar classic, this will do you. As much as I love this ride, I truly regret not riding Superstar Limo mm. because it looked so ridiculous and I'm sad to not have ridden it. You know, that is a regret for many of us that didn't get to see DC on opening day, I think. It's not the only thing I wish I would have seen. Now, the soap opera restaurant would have also been very fun. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Just got off Monsters Inc. Mike and Sully to the rescue. That was my pick. What do y'all think? I love that attraction. I love any Disney dark ride that puts you inside a story, and that's exactly what this does. It's very cute. The animatronics are cute. My favorite room is the room with all the doors. Yeah. It's a very simple mirror effect, but it works brilliantly. It does. I just love that attraction. Plus, all the puns on what are like normal everyday occurrences for us in the yeah. human world, for the monster world. Yeah. Yeah, I find I noticed a door I'd never noticed before for inhuman resources in, yeah. in the office. It is a great one. Again, this is a big part of DCA's history, knowing this. And there's even still some like nods if you know where to look. A couple of the CDA workers that are responding to the human being in the monster world are actually the old animatronics for the celebrities. The easiest ones to find are Jackie Chan and Drew Carey, but they just skinned over the uh, animatronics with CDA costumes. So if you know what you're looking for, you can still find him a relic from Superstar Limo. Here, he looks like this. Oh no. Nailed it. And. <laughs> well, you know, I'm so glad that you all like that attraction because, you know, we're in Hollywood Land and I picked one other thing in Hollywood Land as well. And I, I think we're going to love it. I think it's going to be great. You're really excited about it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm super excited about it. Yeah, we're going to go to Award Wieners, yeah, one we of are. the quick service stands here in Hollywood Land. And I know Molly's thrilled about going as well. Yeah. It's a hot dog stand. It's a hot dog stand. <laughs> Okay, so I'm mobile ordering our award wieners order right now. I'm gonna get the Uptown Chili Dog. Now that's gonna be just a beef hot dog. It's gonna have chili, pepper jack cheese, and some corn chips on top. Alan, you, uh, we were talking about the pastrami Reuben dog. Is yeah, the, the holiday pastrami Reuben dog. It's a seasonal offering. Like a lot of these stands, uh, Ward Wieners has seasonal offerings as well. And Molly, what do you want? Yeah. I would like to get film huh? strip fries. Great, I'll put that on the order as well, and you can enjoy a bite of ours. I thought I could get out of the hot dog thing by just like going to Award Wieners with you and ordering fries. No, I, I drafted. So I have to eat a hot dog. us to eat a hot dog. Uh-huh. You drafted cheese on a stick. You're welcome. Yeah, it's the same. Here they come with this. You ready? Look at the beauty. This right here is the Uptown Chili Dog. This is a, a staple on the menu. We've got chili. Pepper jack cheese. I like those things. Corn chips. I like those things. All on a hot dog. Stop. Yeah. We got our film strip fries. They come as the side. I know you were excited about those, so we got you some. I'm excited about the film strip Perfect. fries. Perfect. And when you eat a bite of the hot dog, you can have some. And over here, we have the pastrami Reuben dog. This is a seasonal offering at Award Wieners, available just for the holidays. It's an all beef hot dog with thinly sliced pastrami, caramelized onions, pickled cabbage, Thousand Island, spiked mustard, provolone, and pickle spears with, of course, the film strip fries. You know, Max, I'm excited about this. Same. How you doing? This is, I mean, just your standard chili dog. The corn chips bring a great crunch to it. But, I mean, if you love a chili dog, it's on a great toasted bun. The all beef hot dog, the chili tastes great. That pepper jack to give it a little bit of that uh, kick. I love it. You love a chili dog, you'll love this. Let me tell you, I don't know what I was expecting going into this, but it's actually surprising me. It is very mustard forward, but I've tried all of the elements individually, and it's actually a good pastrami Reuben. 
with the addition of a classic, I'll be, be frank. I really like it. It's just a nice balanced review with some Thousand Island dressing, some good crunchy slaw for a texture change. And you got that I'll be frank. I'm trying Alan's first because it looks less appealing. Wait a minute now. I don't know. It feels like it's going to be a lot going on. Like, it just look. looks like a sandwich it's bun. It's a lot. It is a sandwich bun. I mean, I know, but... You got this, champ. Our we have 14 minutes until showtime once again. 14 minutes. That good, huh? At first it did just taste like a pastrami sandwich. So I liked it. Because I like pastrami. It's very salty meat. I like Thousand Island dressing. I like mustard and pickles. And then the hot dog pit. And it, it doesn't, to me, work at all. It is like two completely different items shoved together. No thank you. All I can think about this one is that the bun looks really good. Mm -hmm. And I like chili and I like chips and cheese, so. She loves a chili dog. <laughs> I wash it down. Mm -hmm. Hey, you did great. It once again just gets ruined by the fact that it's a hot dog. The chili's good, the bread's good, the chips are good, and then they put a hot dog in it. All right, tell me all your thoughts on dog. I thought it was good. It was very tasty. I have to say that the pastrami Reuben could have done without the pickles, but very tasty otherwise. Why? No, okay, okay. I'm not mad. Only because... The Mickey Christmas dancing cavalcade came by while we were waiting for our food and it was delightful and Clarabelle was in it and it was really cute and we wouldn't have seen that had Max not made us go to award wieners so for that reason I enjoyed it. You're welcome. All right, we have had award wieners and we are on to our next, which again is going to be my thing. I picked Incredicoaster over here on Pixar Pier, one of my favorite attractions. You know what? Pixar Pier has a lot of nice things. Uh, we've got <laughs> Toy Story Mania, but we also have Mickey's Fun Wheel, which is, a, I mean, a crowd favorite. Molly, I'm sure you love Mickey's Fun Wheel. I don't like the Pixar Pals or Pixar Pal Around. Yes, yes, yeah. Now. That is the new name for Mickey's Fun Wheel. Pixar Pal Around. Since the Pixar Pier rebrand. But I, I mean, it's great. It's, it's it, not great. It's, it's so scary. It's a unique Ferris it's wheel so ride. Scary. Really only can get this type of Ferris wheel ride at Disney California Adventure. No, you can go to Ferris wheel anywhere I'm, you want. Oh, now anywhere. they don't swing the same Fair? way. <laughs> and, and, you know, with, oh gosh, my web slingers victory, it feels like maybe I should give us a real unique, classic, iconic, opening day Disney California Adventure attraction. What do you think? I think that that's silliness when Mission Breakout is on the table. And we'll see. All right, fam, listen. I'm just a conversation between you and, and me right now. I'm always up here getting some B-roll for, uh, for Incredicoaster. You might be able to see her ahead of me. Listen. I'm, I'm trying to egg her on that I'm gonna pick Pixar Pal around as my choice, but the reality is she's a pretty good sport about that hot dog, and you know she's just visiting for the weekend. I want to make sure she gets to ride her favorite ride, so I'm probably gonna pick Mission Breakout. But don't tell her our secret. Um, I'm gonna keep uh, kind of amping up the the fun wheel bit. Now, Incredicoaster was formerly known as California Screamin', and it was an opening day attraction at Disney California Adventure. It's a classic boardwalk style roller coaster with a 48 inch height requirement and it does have a single inversion which is not always normal for Disney coasters. Uh, on the east coast of course you do have rock and roller coaster but otherwise you don't see many roller coasters in Disney parks that have inversions so sort of unique in that way. I love this attraction when Pixar Pier got a total IP rebrand this did get converted to the Incredicoaster and they brought what I would call storytelling elements to a roller coaster. There are these really cool tubes throughout the ride that feature different Incredibles characters. There's great music, um, and, and it's one of my favorite. It also, weirdly, very often doesn't have a very long line. So um, I ride this attraction pretty regularly as a local with the Magic Key, and I wouldn't miss it. If you are here, make sure to ride it. <laughs> Would you say it was super? I would say it was 
Do you agree? Yeah. What a classic attraction. It's just so good. And the retheming actually plus everything up, which is really nice to see. Yeah, the storytelling elements they brought when they rethemed this whole area, I think are awesome. And pretty unique to a roller coaster. At Disney. What? I think Universal the story coaster is better than Disney ever has, but I do really like this retheme right here. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, see what you're I think saying. the elements of having the tunnels with the different characters trying to go for Jack Jack. I think it's really fun. It was a very good upgrade. For sure. I just think this land is so cute. I love the Pixar details. Like, look up on the uh, little gazebos here. You've got Bo Peep on that one, Rex on that one. My favorite part of Incredicoaster is when you take off and you actually have Dash run alongside with you. Even look at the trash cans. You've got ones that are Andy's bedroom with the clouds over by Inside Out, um, Emotional Whirlwind. You've got ones that look like the memory balls. This is just such a cute retheme. Well, after riding one of my favorite attractions on Pixar Pier, we are continuing around and look at what we have arrived at. Listen, with my win on Web Slingers, Molly, I think I've made my decision. I decided I wanted to mull it over a little bit, and I have. And how convenient that our travels have brought us here to the Pixar Power Round. How do you feel about riding Pixar Power Round? It's so scary. Uh huh. It makes me scream. Uh huh. But I. The main thing is, we don't get to ride Guardians. Well, but listen, I won, and and so I, know. I want you. I'm to a have, good sport, and you've got Tower of Terror at home. I do. And listen, and I, I have a that, Guardians ride now. That's a drop ride, and you've got Guardians now, and so. This is something you can only get at DCA. I don't have to really feel about this so So good. Yeah, I'm glad. Okay, well, that's great. I'm glad you're a good sport because I've decided we're gonna ride Mission Breakout. Really? Yeah. But maybe we should ride, you know, eventually. Yeah, if we have time. Sometime. If we have time. Who's to say? One of the cutest part of the re-themes are the pay-to-play games here that are very boardwalk style. So you've got one themed after the Pixar short La Luna, you have a Wally -E themed one, a Heimlich from A Bug's Life themed one, and a Bullseye themed one. And sadly, the last time I was here, I was alone, and most of these games require more than one person to play, so I didn't get to. But the prizes are so cute. I know we have more things on our checklist. We do. But maybe we could take a little game break like and it. try to win a prize. Like, look at that little bullseye. I would like to have that bullseye. Yeah. What are the games? Okay, so the Bullseye Stallion Stampede is the classic roll a ball up into the ramp, into different holes. And it's and that horse moves race. the horses forward in a horse race. First one to reach the finish line wins the prize. Okay. Lots and, of people can play this. And the prizes are really cute because you could get a bullseye. You can. It depends on how many people play is how big the prize is. And that's true for all of these. Yeah, but that's Toy Story themed prizes. Yeah. Next up, we have the Heimlich's Candy Corn Toss, a classic. You're going to throw a ball through Heimlich's mouth. you got to feed him, and you get Bugs Life prizes or a candy corn. I do like that one because it makes me think of Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, which used to exist here. Candy corn! Um, but I, I'm bad at throwing. Yeah. Well, we know Wally Space Race. This is the shoot the stream of water oh, at the target. I'm good at this. Raise Wally and Eve, and winner wins a Wally themed prize. I think I'm going to be the best at this one, but I want these prizes the least so far. And then the La Luna Star Catcher is the everyone wins fish for a star, and depending on what star you get determines the prize you get. So this one is not a competitive game. It's a like, hey, you're just going to see what kind of prize you get. No, we're, we're too competitive for this. I, I agree. What are your Jesse, Allen? What are you? We're very proud of you. Tell him. I'm proud of you, Woody. I wish you were Buzz Lightyear. And at least he's not Jesse. True. I should have picked Jesse. It's finally my time to be in charge, and what a perfect activity to be my first pick. Not only today, but literally this is my first pick in the draft. We are at the Corn Dog Castle here in Paradise Gardens, and no, we're not getting corn dogs. We are getting the infamous cheese on a stick.
Corn Dog Castle literally has three menu items. They have a hot link corn dog, a classic corn dog, and cheddar cheese stick, which is literally just a block of cheddar cheese deep fried in corn dog batter. And it is one of my favorite foods on the planet. Here it is in all its glory. And yes, I made all three of us get cheese on a stick. It is literally, once again, cheddar cheese deep fried in corn dog batter. It comes with your choice of chips or a cutie, and it's perfection. Cheers. Cheers. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, so much cheese. Yeah. Is it the most gourmet thing here at Disney California Adventure? No. Is it the most delicious thing here at Disney California Adventure? Maybe, if you're me and love cheese. It's slightly sweet because of the corn dog batter. It's obviously super cheesy. The lower you get, the cheesier it gets because of gravity. And it's just something I love. I loved it as a kid and I love eating it now, so I always get one when I'm in DCA. How did y'all feel about cheese on a stick? So much dairy. That was tasty, but a lot of dairy. It's just it's a Disneyland. I mean, like, if you're gonna be in Disney California Adventure, you gotta get cheese on a stick. Every time I come, basically. It's amazing. An excellent pick. Thank you, thank you. I would say best snack we've had so far. Well, I might be like brunch is pretty good. Uh, I thought you were gonna say that hot dog. It's not. It was Welcome to Cars Land and my pick number two. I was very specific on this pick because I want to ride Radiator Springs Racers. It's one of the best attractions here. It is part dark ride, part thrill ride. It is so, so fun. And it is in the adorably themed Cars Land, which is all decked out for Christmas. But the specificity of this request was that I wanted to ride Radiator Springs Racers after watching them light up Radiator Springs for the nighttime sky. It is so fun. They do it every single night, not just during the holidays. They light up the Cozy Cone Motel and flows and all of the different cars um, uh, locations that they've built here but it's extra fun during the holidays because they're also gonna light up all of the decorations it usually happens a few minutes after sunset so we're here ready and waiting it happened and it's beautiful and it's only gonna get more beautiful as the Sun continues to set it's not a big thing they don't make an announcement about it or anything you can just check when Sun uh, set is and then know it's gonna happen right around then but all the lights come on gradually just like they do in the movie and this land is really so so very cute I am NOT a huge fan of the cars franchise as far as the films go but this land is so well done you've got all kinds of characters and places from the movie you've got Fillmore's you've got Sarge's you've got Flo's you've got the Cozy Cone Motel it's just incredibly well done and now it's time to ride one of if not the best ride in the entire park now there are two smaller attractions here in Cars Land as well there is Luigi's Rollickin Roadsters which is a cute little car ride where the cars dance and there's also also Tomater's Junkyard Jamboree, which is the same ride system as Alien Swirling Saucers in Disney's Hollywood Studios and Walt Disney World. But we are headed to Radiator Springs Racers. They use the same ride vehicle as Test Track, but it absolutely puts Test Track to shame. You are headed on an adventure with the Cars characters, a beautiful ride through Radiator Springs. You'll run into Mater, you'll run into Lightning, and then you are actually gonna race another car. You may win, you may not, and it is super cute, super fun. It's especially great at night. Now, Radiator Springs Racers is incredibly popular. It's got a 70 minute wait right now. It's had a three hour wait earlier today. It does have single rider. It also is a fancy ride here in Disneyland, meaning it's an individual cost if you'd like to purchase the Lightning Lane. Radiator Springs Racers does have a 40 inch height requirement. And one thing to note about fancy rides here in Disneyland, unlike Walt Disney World, when fancy rides only, you can select which time you'd like. Here in Disneyland for the fancy rides, it's a first come, first serve basis. It's next available, just like the regular Genie Plus attractions. Do y'all think we're gonna win? Yeah. I always think we're going to win. Me too. What color car do you think we're going to have? Blue car. Red car. Gray car. Very specific, Radiator Springs Racers. 
at sunset. It's undeniable you pick good things. Thank you. It's Thank a you. great attraction, great views. And we won. We and did win. And you know what? Won. I got the right color car. You did not. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was green, but you were close. Yeah. yeah. You know what? It's a thought that counts. Yeah, we were really racing our own personal best. I think so, too. It was amazing. We I, we were so far in front of the competition, I didn't couldn't even, even see him. him. Yeah, I didn't even see him. him. Now, whenever I ride this ride, yeah. I think, how much better it is the test track. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Isn't that ride just everything Test Track isn't? It is. It could be. It's phenomenal. It's got the dark ride portions of it, the storytelling portions of it, incredible animatronics in the cars, plus the thrill ride, the beautiful outdoor environment. It's just better. It's just better. It's amazing. Definitely put it on your to-do list when you're in Disney California Adventure. And if you can ride it this time of night and see it all lit up, even better. Now, because of my win on Web Slingers, you all know I got to add one pick to our day, and I did indeed choose Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Now, this is widely regarded as one of the best rides in the park. It is a thrill ride, and it used to be the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It did get a retheme over to Guardians of the Galaxy, and now I would describe it as kind of less scary, more fun. I mean, if you don't like a drop ride, it is still at its core a drop ride, but it's got fun music, different music, just like if you've ridden Cosmic Rewind on the East Coast, you can kind of gamble on which song you might get. Tons of Guardian Easter eggs throughout and including a Figment Easter egg in the queue. So a little bit of East Coast love on a West Coast ride. But one of my favorites, it does have a 40 inch height requirement, so not for the tiniest of kids, but if you love a thrill ride, if you love Tower of Terror, if you want something a little bit more fun and upbeat, this is definitely it for you. All throughout the Guardian's queue in this first entrance area, you'll see the collector's collection featuring a ton of Marvel Easter eggs like Cosmo, the dog, um, different weapons or armor, and all the way in the top is Figment hanging out. East Coast to West Coast. I don't know what he's doing here, but we're, here he is. Another interesting Easter egg you might find in Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout is the original Yeti from the Matterhorn attraction. Um, tucked away here on the second level, the collector seems to have gotten more than just one Disney character. I think the collector is a Disney adult. It seems that way. Waiting for my signal, and then we'll be on a merry way. But this plan won't work unless you help. It's not gonna take this. Now move it. on this ride every song has different scenes there are six different songs that you can get so every ride feels a little bit different it's pretty long it's a ton of fun I know drop rides are pretty polarizing a lot of people don't like them at all but if you can stand a drop ride don't miss this one and now the moment you've all been waiting for close-up magic Creepy voice aside, Doctor Strange Mysteries of the Mystic Arts is a show that plays throughout the day in various time slots. We've got about 20 minutes until the next show, which is at 6.45 p.m. So we're going to grab a quick beverage from Pim's Test Kitchen 
and just sit and wait for the show and take in the beautiful ambiance of Avengers Campus. Mobile ordered at Pim Tasting Lab, which is the bar side. A couple of Easter eggs to point out. They've got two of these throughout the land. One is Scott Lang's, one is Hope's, um, and they will get text messages up at the top from different uh, other Avengers. It's very funny if you stand and watch those for a minute. Another cool thing is that if you look at the taps for some of the drinks, you will notice that they are things that have grown big because, of course, this is Pim Test Kitchen. It looks like Pim Particles have been involved. I personally like the popsicle sticks. That one says, where to bees vacation? The beach. Get it? Another thing that's very neat is that some of the craft beers are actually on these magic taps that fill up from the bottom. It's a wonder to behold. All right, again, non-alcoholic option here out of the Pim Tasting Lab. I got the Popping Particle Punch, which is a carbonated pineapple hurricane with some grenadine added and pop rocks. Uh, yeah, I mean, pineapple is a pretty strong flavor. The grenadine also brings that extra flavor to it as well. It feels, I mean, it just tastes sort of you know, punchy, party punchy, but you do get the pop rock, but the sound in the drink, as well as that light sensation on my tongue. It's not super strong, because most of them are popping right here, but it's a nice, like, fun-themed um, mocktail option. Balls. Balls. Loki's up there. You get it. Um, I am trying a blood orange Cali it is an orange Hefeweizen. Those are actually my favorite kinds of beer. They're nice wheat beers. Ooh, that is delicious. It tastes similar to a blue moon if you were to squeeze an orange into a blue moon, but it's a little bit lighter and a little bit zippier than that. Um, every time I've come to Pim Tasting Lab, I've tried a different beer because they're rotating. They bring in different seasonal ones. I love how much craft beer is here in this park. And so if you are a beer fan, there's always something fun to taste. If you're a cocktail fan and you'd rather try something that's not a beer, uh, there is a gin and honey-based cocktail that's delicious, as well as a spicy margarita. Both of those are pretty good, and they come in a souvenir cut. I got the El Chango from Bootleg's Brewery. Uh, it is a Mexican-style lager. True to form, it tastes similar to what you'd expect from a Corona, but significantly lighter and less of the more acrid, weedy aftertaste, which is a big win. It's actually pretty refreshing, and I wouldn't expect that from a Mexican-style lager. Um, so I enjoy that. Cheers. We went ahead and hopped in line for Doctor Strange and the Mysteries of the Mystic Arts show. It is live entertainment starring Doctor Strange and sometimes a special guest from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and it's a small show where Doctor Strange performs some feats of the mystic arts for you in an attempt to explain how that functions for us mere, uh, well, normal people. From what I've heard, it is a stellar show from my two compatriots. They're thrilled. I'm, I'm less bitter about this show now that we got to ride Guardians. I was mostly bitter when I thought this was taking the place of Guardians. So... I will say the last time I watched the show, it was like 95 degrees and we were baking in the sun. So this will be better. From everything that I've read, the show is better in the evening because the light effects are a little bit more prominent. I can, yeah, I can, I can see, see that. that. I can see that. We're going in with clear hearts. Open clear minds. Eyes, full hearts. Can't lose. Can't lose. Nice. The queue for the show can get quite long, so I do recommend getting here a little bit early and standing in line to make sure that you get a good spot to watch. We're sitting crisscross applesauce on the floor. We're Ready. adults. It's like a birthday party this year. <laughs> it's my birthday. And Alan got you this magician. You're welcome. My dad. <laughs> Thank you.
like this. Power of the Vishanti. Power of the Vishanti. We create the spectral shield. We create the spectral shield. Good. We're ready. Now put together with me. By the power of the Vishanti, we create the spectral shield. Keep it going. By the power of the Vishanti, we create the spectral shield. By the power of the Vishanti, we create the spectral shield. Rounding out my picks, as well as our evening in Disney California Adventure, we are going to watch World of Color. This is the nighttime spectacular at this park, and it is a projection show among many fountains here in the middle of California Adventure. It is absolutely beautiful. Think every color of the rainbow, projecting classic Disney music, Disney scenes. It's kind of like that portion of Fantasmic, but without the live action characters or the fireworks. It's a really wonderful show and a great way to end the night. Plus, it's really fun because while we're here during the holidays, they are showing World of Color Season of Light. So it's gonna have a holiday twist. I personally never seen this version, so I'm really excited. Now, the thing about World of Color is, like many nighttime spectaculars, it's incredibly popular. So popular that to grab a spot here on the waterfront, you're actually gonna wanna join a virtual queue. Currently, the virtual queue opens up at noon. Uh, you're gonna wanna confirm your part a few minutes beforehand make sure everybody in your group is all synced up as a pro tip use a world clock to count down and then at 11 59 59 hit refresh and then hit join it will let you know if you're in the blue or yellow section and if you are seeing the nine o'clock or 10 30 show of course depending on the show times of your visit the other way to see world of color in a reserved viewing area is to do the world of color dessert party uh, which is of course an additional cost and you can do like a little dessert situation uh, and have a reserved viewing and some tables down here on the waterfront. You can catch the show from some different angles along the pier. However, if you want the best view of it, I would go ahead and join that virtual queue. It doesn't cost anything to join. You're just going to want to be prompt and timely at noon. Now, just like when I said we were going to ride Radiator Springs Racers, but it had to be at dusk, I was also very specific with my World of Color request, and that's that we had to all go get a bakery case treat, because who doesn't love a treat in a nighttime show? It's true. And I true. selfishly did it because I wanted the churro toffee that you can't get at Walt Disney World. It's only in the Disneyland bakery cases. So I got churro toffee and, y'all, they had a pumpkin spice toffee too. How could I not get both? We have the Rice crispy Tree, one of my favorite bakery case classics personally. And I got the peanut caramel covered apple, which is just my favorite. Cheers. 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 Oh, Bob. The pumpkin spice one is like the best thing I've ever eaten in my whole life. Wow. Pro tip, trolley treats here at Disney California Adventure and Candy Palace over at Disneyland. Take mobile order, so you can mobile order your bakery treats, grab them, really easy. This will make me cry with holiday merriment in my heart. Mm -hmm. But they also were like, hey, remember when Ellie dies at the beginning of Bob? <laughs> <laughs> remember when all the fish but Nemo get eaten in Finding Nemo? Remember when Andy gives his toys away? Yeah. 
<laughs> we're gonna play all those scenes. Back to back to back to back <laughs> and just punch you in the emotional gut. We're gonna give you a breather with Lilo and Stitch. And then remember Dumbo. <laughs> uh, here's Mama Jumbo, everybody. <laughs> like it's just an emotional gut punch because you have the joy of the Christmas and the joy of the holiday and the music and the lights and goofy being goofy, and then they like <laughs> literally just like beat you with emotional Disney movies. Yeah, it's beautiful. Though. See it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. You should see it. Uh, truly a perfect way to end this show. And what I love as a Disney Worlder is that this is unlike any show you're going to see out on Disney World. It's so different from fireworks or Fantasmic or even Harmonious, which is a water show. It's well, that concludes everything on our DCA draft list, all nine of our picks, plus the mission breakout for the Web Slinger win. We had a great day here at Disney California Adventure. Let us know whose picks were the best down in the comments. Sorry, I was about to say, it's for sure Dr. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> Not it's not it's Dr. Not, Strange. It's not Dr. Strange. It's definitely not Dr. Strange. Be sure to like. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new, and make sure to ring that notification bell. And follow us on all of our show socials at Mammoth Club or at Mammoth underscore Club. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Max. And I'm Alan. It's been magical. Bye. 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 Bye.